All of those who are not members of the immediate family, we ask that you would stand at this moment. The Bible declares that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises will continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. The word says that I sought the Lord, and the Lord heard me, and the Lord delivered me from every one of my fears. They that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed in their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. David said that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores even my soul. David then says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My brothers and my sisters, it is the word that says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy still comes in the morning. Would you help the choir as they lead us in today?
God a hand clap of praise? Yeah. If that was for me, it would be okay. But I say, can you just go ahead and give God a hand praise? If that was for me, I said it would be okay. But if you just love God, would you just begin wherever you are to give God glory? Would you just begin to give God praise? The Bible declares that everything that has breath ought to be able to praise the Lord. And so I wish I had about 25 people who had every reason to just begin to glorify God in this place. I mean, would you exalt Him in this place? Would you extol Him in this place? The Bible says that if we would be lifted up, He would draw us closer. Anybody want to be drawn closer? Anybody want to be drawn closer? Well, come on and give God your best praise. The Word of God teaches us that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I realize it's difficult. But neighbor, I've got every reason to still tell God that I love him. I've got every reason to lift up my hands. I've got every reason to glorify him, to exalt him. You're not talking to the right neighbor. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, can you do me a favor? Can you just begin to bless God for giving you life? Bless God for giving you strength. because we know that God has been good to us despite everything that has already taken place. And we want you to know that these services are always under the direction of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And that because you're in a church, you might as well have church. And so if you're sitting next to somebody today who doesn't mind lifting their hands, you're in the right place. If you're sitting next to somebody who doesn't mind just telling God that they love God, you're in the right place. But if you have to move, there's enough room for you to move. Because on this day, we also come to lift up the name that is above every name. That the word says that at his name, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. And now these worship services will follow as printed in your worship bulletin. We honor and praise the pastor of the Pleasant View Baptist Church, the Reverend Max Singletary. We lift up our eulogist on today, the Reverend Dr. Marvin Brockington. We lift up all of these preachers, all of these clergy. We lift up the state representatives and the state senators. We lift up those who are guests of this family, but most of all, we lift up the Langley family for such a time as this. And so if you are here today and your hands are still working, would you give God praise for the family today? Because we know that these tests and trials are only coming to make them stronger. And so we praise God for the chance to support you and to be here on today. Now the choir already stole my thunder by singing the opening hymn, uh, but many of them know a hymn that says, Him 
statement number 364 that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness that I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. The hymnologist says on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So without further lining, would you help the choir by singing this hymn of the church, hymn number 364, following which the Reverend Max Singletary will lead us to the throne of grace and mercy, and we will follow and worship as printed in your bulletin. May you sing with the choir.
for to be in here doing this. I guess I was here before him. So I'm here to do a prayer. I want to make this prayer to all the live people. Amen. Langa ain't going to hear me. But I want you live folks to hear me. All the live people in here, do your hand.
says it this way, that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That even when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Somebody say they fell. Amen. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. That one thing that I have desired of the Lord my God is that I would seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, anybody ever had any trouble, the Lord shall hide me in his pavilion in the very secret place of this tabernacle. He shall hide me and he shall set me high upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above every one of my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle every sacrifice of joy. For I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto my God. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, and have mercy also upon me, and do answer for me. For when thou said, Seek my face, and my heart shall unto thee, and thy face the Lord will see. Hide not thy face from me, nor put thy servant away in anger, for thou hast been my help. And leave me not, neither forsake me, for God, you are the God of my salvation. That even when my mother and my father will forsake me, that the Lord will take me up. Teach me, Lord, thy ways, O Lord, and lead me in a path, in a plain path, because of every one of my enemies. Deliver me not unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and such have breathed out cruelty. For I have fainted not, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and the Lord shall strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord. Thus I have read Psalm 27 in its entirety. The word of God is blessed. Evangelist Pittman is coming now to lead us in the New Testament following the New Testament reading. Uh, Sister Gracie Wright is coming with a solo and then we will come back before you in that order. Evangelist Pittman, let's give God praise for her as she comes. Let us heart, our hearts not be troubled. And that what the word said, 
and I believe in God. Yeah. And John 14 tells us, let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mentioned. If it were not so, I would have tell, told you so. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, I go ye know, and the way he knows. Yeah. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Give an honor to God, who is the head of my life. I wouldn't give nothing to be here today. But God didn't want to let me off. She said, you are happy. You ain't behind your name. I told her, you know, I'm going to have a JC, Jesus Christ. You ain't don't mean nothing. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say something, and I'm going to take your mind off it a little bit, family. He was like a son to me. Anything I asked him to do, he would come and bark. They were two of a kind. They've been to Charleston, helped me get straight, to come to my house, my daughter's house. But there's one thing about him I didn't know. After all these years, I didn't know his name was Junior. I call him Jim Curtis. And he never corrected me. Nick Allman never corrected me. Molly never corrected my daughter. And they told me what happened. I said, oh, no, not James Curtis. My daughter said, no, Mama, I don't think that's his name. <laughs> I said, well, what's his name? She said, I don't know. I said, well, when Mark gets that straight, I'm going to ask him. But I don't know if I asked Mark that. His name is Georgia. And he never correct me. You know, black people, and I'm going to say this, we love the nickname our children. So I thought that was a nickname. John, Stanky, Bobo, Rabbit, Fish, <laughs> JJ. If JJ out there, I, I still don't know JJ. <laughs> we didn't name anything. I'll tell you a little story. Now let's, and I'll sing my little piece of song. I'm not going to sing much. This man went to the hospital, and he asked for <coughs> Bull Brown. The woman said, let me look. She looked. She said, I can't find that name, sir. He said, he here. She said, I can't find it. He said, I just talked to him yesterday. Y'all need to get your thing straight up. The man in here, I just talked to him. She said, let me look again. She looked said, no, sir. Could it be another name? She said, no, his name is Bo Brown. She never did find it. We need to start nicknaming this show. <laughs> we, need, we need to give them the real names, especially little kids when they get to school. You know, their name is Stanky. <laughs> now, I had a nickname. My nickname was Chicken Gravy. They used to tease me at school. Back then, I would cry because I thought they said I was dark. And I didn't want to be gravy. <laughs> They had this thing, these were high school students telling me to grace in the kitchen, grace in the hall, do for lunch, say, don't eat it all. And they would laugh. COVID-19 got a nickname. In Charleston, we say, Coral. You can't always say that other word. You don't want to say the whole word. It makes you scared. Junior, I'm sorry. I called you James Curtis. That's your other brother. But he was nice, y'all. You know, sometimes you wonder, but like God takes 
bitch. And you're gonna all oh, no good over your own. He's still here. And the good one's gone. But it's not up to me. All of us have our point in time. All of us have our point in time. You just gotta be ready. This song is for the family. To Junior has transitioned over. It's just a little piece in my church. Well, got it going on over here, y'all. I'm being stinging over there with you. So my breath is kind of short. So it's going to be a little piece of gold. Listen, y'all, I'm trying to tell you. 
And my brother was, he was serious when it was time to be serious. He was playful when it was time to be playful. You know, like, I got a video of him the year before last. Um, we had a birthday party for my brother-in-law at the community center. And I have a video of him battling against my, at that time, seven-year-old daughter. <laughs> Y'all, it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's the funniest thing ever. So, you know, my brother used to go to work. So one thing about him, now he worked. If he wasn't on the job, punching in the clock, on his days off, he'd be working on somebody's car, he'd be working in somebody's yard. I mean, he was just that guy. And that's why I said what I said at the press conference that we had, because, like I said, I know him. I know him. So people say, oh, you want to say that about him anyway, because that's your brother. No. I know him. I know him. I know him for the whole 46 years of his life. I know him. Just like I knew him, he knew me. So he already knows. We're going to walk for him. We're going to fight for him. That's just what it is. Amen.
mama, my kids, Judy kids, our aunts, uncles, cousins, and everybody, y'all know. Judy love all of us more than we can ever imagine. And we will never know how much, but all we can do is think about it and be glad for it. He was a good friend. He was a good person. 
He was a man of character and principle. We all miss him, but you will miss him most of all. To Robert's parents, I say, we know you're going through a lot. Mm. Our community is praying for you. And if there's anything we can do to help, don't hesitate to call on us. I know my words are insufficient for the pain you are experiencing. But I hope you can take solace in knowing that you raised a good man that will never be forgotten. Amen. To the rest of Robert's family, I leave you with this. I believe Robert would say, look out for my children. I know you love me, just look out for my children. One day, I was at Weaver's, and I was standing up beside Robert, and he and I were sharing a beverage, and I started talking about my children. And as I talked about my children, Robert leaned back and said, I got 10 head children in the house. <laughs> and I said, I said to Robert, well, we we'll be talking to you about that no more. <laughs> you, you don't see it all. <laughs> but Nicole, you were right. God got a good one. He got a champion for him. You all in all, in all of our prayers. Let us bless God for Attorney Weaver and Sister Nicole. We thank God for the words. Come on, put your hands together for them. We have now special remarks coming from three men who have stuck by this family's side during this time and during this season. We lift up uh, at this very moment Attorney Bakari Sellers, Senator Gerald Malloy, and Senator Robbie Sab, who are coming in this order. Let's give God praise for them. Good morning, good afternoon now. I, I dare not be too long. I've gotten to know this family really well over the last three weeks. And I will tell you, this is the strongest family that I've ever been around. Unfortunately, this is a tragic, sad part of the work that we do because they won't stop killing us. So I stand here today with Senator Gerald Malloy and Brandon William. Brandon, stand up so that people can see you. And we have an opportunity to represent this family throughout this process. But I, I, don't, I don't want you to clap for that. I want you to clap for the fact that I told them that we were going to go and get justice for this family. I want you to understand that, that this journey for justice is a long one and it won't be easy, but I need you to stand with this family. Stand with them as we go and fight fights that we should dare not have to fight. Pastor, I was thinking in the back and Senator Malloy called me last night and said, what are you going to say? I said, I don't know, Senator, but I'm going to be brief. But then I remembered Ecclesiastes chapter 3, which taught us that there was a time and a season for everything. I will tell you, Ms. Rosalind, that you don't expect this knock to come to your door. Yes, no one would ever guess that Junior would be the one to help us change the way we do things. George Floyd was a young man in Minnesota, and nobody thought the world would know his name. Tamir Rice, a young boy, Alton Sterling, Keith Lamont Scott, Walter Scott, Eric Gardner, the list goes on and on and on. Sandra Glenn, Ahmad Albury, we ought to take them and we add another one to the list. But we're going to stand for justice for us. So don't you fret, I see you, my brother. Don't fret because we're going to stand with you. This community is going to stand up because now is a season for standing for justice so they will stop killing us, Pastor. And I want everybody to know that this fight will not be over tomorrow. It will not be over in a week. It will not be over. And when the cameras are gone and the people are gone, we're going to be there with you. Senator Saab and Caesar McKnight and, 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 and Carl Allen and Anderson are going to be with you this entire time because we love you like Robert loved this community. So I want this church to celebrate and stand up for justice. I want this church to celebrate and stand up for Robert.
There's a sweet spirit in this place. And I know it's the spirit of the Lord. My mom would be remiss if she were standing here and said, you know, God is good. Somebody else in my church said all the time. My dad used to sing a song that said, I want to live so God could use me. Any place and any time. I am proud today to stand for someone that I did not know, but it seems like I know. Because I've seen his face through his father, his mother, his two sisters, pillars of strength, and his ten children that will all stand tall. And what they know is, is that he was a man that God used. And we didn't know how, when, or where. But we saw these eloquent speakers come before you, and we see that he was a person that this community loved. I asked one person a question. It says, did you ever see him? He says, I saw him going to work, and I saw him coming home. And those are the times that I saw him. And so I joined with Bakari and others to embrace this young man. And he is now the angel on our shoulders, whispering in our ears, telling us that it's all right, that I stand with you. As we go around doing this kind of work, there's always someone that would say something bad. I have not heard that. And so young people, church family, and those in the community, someone has to tell the story. And the story is who was Robert Langley Jr., affectionately known as Jr. So it's going to take not only Mr. Robert, Ms. Roger, and the family, and the children, and Juliet, and others, to end up saying who he was. It's going to take this entire community to tell the story as to who he was, and why his life should not have been cut short, to hold those accountable, to end up marching for justice, so that it will roll down like water. And we ask that you join this family, put your arms around them. And God, thank you for blessing us with Robert. Yeah. To all of us, let his name live on. Amen. And I assure to you Amen. that his name will live on. Amen. It will be known all over the world. Amen. And young people, and particularly children, you should be proud of your family. Right. Be proud of your daddy. The one thing that you know when all of this is over and done is that he loved you and it's our hands that we'll be able to join with you and it's our honor of a lifetime to represent you to make certain that justice is done. God bless you all. Washington, the pastor of this great church, uh, to the uh, preacher, the eulogist uh, for this occasion, uh, to my friends in the law, and more particularly to this family and to uh, this community. Um, you know, every once in a while, you, you know that either folks uh, don't like you or they don't want you to talk very much. And I know that because of the speakers that came in front of me, who all did just an excellent and awesome job. And so then the question is, what can I add? Uh, and so let me harken back to a uh, conversation that we were having with our a songstress who talked about nicknames, uh, and uh, Kari and, and Gerald and I uh, all started asking each other the question about, well, what's your nickname? And, and, and my nickname is actually a testament to the fact that we ought not give people nicknames. Um, and, and so my nickname is Oink. And, and so, so everybody in Greeleyville, the community that I grew up in, uh, I mean, to this day, y'all, they don't call me Senator Sam. Uh, they don't call me Attorney Sam. They call me Oink. <laughs> so I told Bakari, here's how bad it was. Uh, so I grew up in Greeleyville, went to Voorhees College undergrad, moved to Florida, 
And so most of my adult life, I was away from home. Uh, so I came back home in 1987 and decided that I was going to run for the school board in 1988. Right. It was so bad until if you Google my name, what you will find is that the official name on the ballot was Ronnie Oinksad. <laughs> and that's just so that people would know who it is that's actually running for the position. Let me say thank you for the opportunity to be the senator for District 32. It's a high honor for me. And one of the things that happened in the Senate uh, this past week was there was a motion made. And the Senate unanimously agreed that we adjourn in memory of Robert Langley Jr. That's important for a couple of reasons. Uh, when I listen to my colleague, Senator Malloy, speak, about the importance of the name and how the name ought never be forgotten. That solidifies the fact that in the archives of the state of South Carolina, not just now, uh, not tomorrow, but the rest of the lives of South Carolinians will know uh, that name and will know how the Senate and the state of South Carolina viewed it on what I consider to be one of the highest of levels. As your senator, I could not be more proud of how you all have dealt with this unspeakable tragedy. Right. And as I reflected on y'all, I, I prayed and asked the Lord to give me the kind of strength that Makari has talked about that you all have exhibited. And I hope that I'm able to conduct myself on the high plains of dignity and respect that this family has shown. One of my memories, and, and the fondest memory I think I have about the Emanuel 9 tragedy uh, was a picture on the bridge where everybody gathered. All right. And it looked like America. It just looked like America, y'all. And then there was a headline that said, this is how we riot. We riot by coming together. Because my grandmother told me a long time ago, she said, son, two wrongs don't make a right. So I believe when we do things right, then that's when justice truly rolls down. And so just know that we are with you in the fight. We are with you in the struggle. But I would submit, y'all, that we ought function on the high plane. Right. See, change can come about functioning on the high plane. Yeah. Right. Michelle Obama told us, she says, you know, when they uh, go low, we go high. Yeah. And folks, that's how we ought to conduct ourselves. I know that there's a march scheduled for tomorrow. I'm delighted to hear about it. I can't make it, I can't be a part of you physically, but I'm delighted to hear about it. Because we get the opportunity to celebrate a life well lived. We get the opportunity to embrace this family and let them know that their walk, their journey, that they are not alone. And we get the opportunity to serve notice to the world that black lives matter. Let me conclude by saying this. Dr. Charles Edward Murray, uh, who is, I believe, one of the more renowned educators uh, the world has ever known, uh, used to talk about people doing according to their understanding. People doing according to their understanding. I believe that the way that you all are conducting yourselves is consistent with a good, solid, fundamental understanding of how people treat others and how they deserve to be treated. I just want to thank this family and thank this family and thank this family again for the strength that you are showing. People will be watching you and how you react to these situations. So many of us are going to follow your lead. And so we are just praying that God would strengthen you and guide you in such a way that as we follow you and as you follow Christ, then God ultimately will get the glory.
Thank you all. We bless God for Senator Sab, Senator Malloy, and Attorney Sellers. Let's give God praise for them one more time. And now we offer a special tribute, and I believe it's right and just that even as these two brothers are coming, sons of Brother Robert, Robert Arkell Presley, and Rayshawn Tyreek Langley are coming to give a special tribute on behalf of their father. Amen. And I think where we are sitting, we can applaud them as they come. As a matter of fact, we can stand as they come to give these words because we know it's hard today, amen? amen? But these are his children, and so we just thank God that they have the opportunity. I can't stand before you all today and tell you that I'm not hurt, because I am. Our father, he was the best father we ever known. The only father. Take your time, bro. The day I graduated from high school was the most exciting day of my life, but not only my life, my family life. But most importantly, it was the smile my father had on his face. That was so much to me. Then he walked across that stage. That was a moment that I wouldn't trade for anything. I know he's not here physically with us, but in my heart, that's what he always will be. And I know that when I finish college, he will be right there in my heart again. So, I am sad, but I'm not sad. So when I went to visit, when I went to his way, when I went to view his body, I couldn't cry. I wasn't sad. I was happy. Not that he left us, because I know that he's in a better place. Amen. Just looking at him, seeing that smile on his face, that gave me closure. feel better than what I felt. Let's hold on. Thank you, Lord. It has been hard for all of us. And we're going to continue to stand. We're going to continue to look up God's name. All right, man. Right. Right. Be you all my brother. Can stand before you all and speak. So we want to thank him first and foremost because he's the head of all of our lives. Not too many people that did know my father. Like everybody knew him. He was a well-known person, well-known person in our community. And he was he was a son. He was a brother. He was a father. And he was a granddaddy also. Um, my daddy was so he was more happy than I was when he found out that I was having my, my first child, and he was happy to be a granddad. I would tease him all the time. I was like. Sure, you got a whole football team and you the quarterback. <laughs> I'll tease them all the time. The only thing 
thing he would say, well, somebody got to do it. <laughs> he always made everybody laugh. Got laughed out a lot of room. Like my brother said, he, he won't be forgotten. He's, he's still here. He always be still here. Like my aunt said, he always fixed on cars, had nice cars himself. I remember when I walked, when I drove into grandma house, drove into the yard, he was outside cleaning the cleaning the rims. And I walked past, I was like, I ain't seen nothing. He was cleaning, the rims was already clean. I'm like, how hard are you gonna clean it? I'm like, I picked that him, I was like, you want you want to cut a top to you like I'm the Wizard of Oz, you want to cut a top to you? <laughs> He was a hard working man. He hard work. He always worked hard for what he want. And encouraged me and my brother to work hard to succeed. Thank you, Lord. Thank and I just want to thank the whole community for sharing stories and supporting us the whole way. That's, that's all we can ask for. It's all right. Y'all support helped us through very tough time. Very tough. But the strongest person I know is my grandma. Yeah. My grandma been through so much lately. She been through so much. She lost her brother, lost my dad, and her other son, as y'all know, is in the hospital. So she she been strong, and to see her be strong. That's how I know I could be strong. I know that. She helped me get through a lot. Just watching her, she helped all of us get through a lot. She's the reason why I can stand up here and talk to y'all today. And I just want to tell her thank you. I want to tell Mr. Bokari and everybody, thank y'all too. For working hard and making sure we get justice for my father. Right. Come on church, let's put our hands together and thank God. As we continue in this worship experience, uh, Sister Lila Goss is coming to lead us in the acknowledgments and as she's coming to lead us in the acknowledgments, we want to take this opportunity on behalf of the House of Hope Hopewell Amy Church to thank, to thank the family for allowing us to be of service to you on today. Uh, when we heard about this tragedy, the very first thing we did was to pick up the phone and to call the family and to let them know that our doors are open to them. Because this is not only just the house of prayer, as the Word of God says, but this is God's house and it's open to everybody. And so it is our honor and privilege on behalf of Hopewell AME Church, the House of Hope in Hemingway, to always stand and to be ready to be of service to you. And so I thank God for you, family. I thank God for your strength. And I thank God that you allowed me the opportunity to even stand here today and to be a part of this worship experience. Uh, because even though I had no chance ever to meet Brother Robert, Hearing the stories, talking with you here at the conference room has let me know that there's a life that has been lost, but as they've already said, we stand with you to get justice. So we give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. Sister Goss is coming uh, with the acknowledgments. Following the acknowledgments, we'll have a solo uh, by Sister Shana Cox Woodbury. And following that, uh, the words of comfort will be offered by Brother Junior, or Brother Robert's uncle. The Reverend Dr. Marvin Brockington, the pastor of the Victory Memorial Baptist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, we know that there is a word from the Lord. Amen. I said we know that there is a word from the Lord. And so we ask you to pray for and pray with Pastor Brockington. Uh, because he cannot do anything until the Holy Ghost comes. Until the real preacher moves in this place. And so we're stretching our hands and we're just putting our hands towards him right now. We just give him his marching orders. And we declare in the atmosphere, Pastor Brockington, that you would just simply preach the word. 
and allow God to use you for God's glory. And so we thank God for that and we thank God for worship. And Sister Goss is at the mic and we give our attention to her. Amen. Let's give God praise for her as she comes. Amen. Good afternoon to everyone in the sanctuary on this afternoon. Of course, this is not the occasion we would want to be here for, but we still give God thanks through all things. The family um, had so many um, expressions of love during this difficult time that they did want to acknowledge everyone for everything that you have done, everyone. Um, they had numerous cards, um, phone calls, visits, um, just numerous um, expressions of love, and we just want to um, read some of the cards that were sent during this, during this time. I wish I could wave a magic wand and make everything better for you, but I can't. All I can do is be here whenever you need me. Praying for you, the Singletary God's family. In sympathy, in our thoughts and cherished memories, our loved ones are always with us. May your precious memories and sympathy of friends help to con con confront you in all, at all times. And this is from Junior's co-workers and the, um, his job, Agro-America and staff. Even in our deepest sadness, he's here, weeping with us, mourning with us, understanding our need to ask why. And right now, I'm praying that he will hold you close and let his unveiling love heal your hearts. Love, Loretta and Emmanuel and family. There is so little one can say so little one can do when you have lost a loved one who was very dear to you. Our prayers are with you and your family, Williamsburg County Supervisor, County Council, and staff. With a heartfelt sympathy in the loss of your loved one, God is my keeper, the Lord is the sustainer of my life. Psalms 54 and 4. May the healing gift of time and the timeless love of God carry you gently through the loss you are feeling right now. Williamsburg County School District, Office of Adult Education, Rudenda Miller, Secretary. Remember, your father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask him. Matthew 6 and 8. In all things, I'm praying he'll carry you through. Love, Demetrius and Tamika Evers and family. Thinking of you with warmest regards in your time of bereavement, may you find healing and comfort in the days to come, Harvest Bay High School faculty and staff, Larry Owen, principal. Celebration of Life, Robert Langley, Jr., September 23rd, 1975, February 6, 2022. The Legacy of Robert Langley, Jr., Mr. Robert Langley, Jr., son of Rosalind, of, excuse me, of Robert Lee Langley and Rosalind Brockington Langley, was born September 23, 1975, in Georgetown County, South Carolina. He was a lifelong member of Pleasant View Baptist Church in Hemingway, South Carolina. His parental and maternal grandparents, Edgar Walker, Louise Coles, Herbert, and Alberta Brockington, all preceded his death. Robert received his formal education from Pleasant Hill High School 
from which he graduated in 1993. Following high school graduation, Junior, as he was affectionately called, entered the workforce. He believed that a man should always provide for his family, which is what he always did. He was employed with the Patricia Grant Cumberland Hotel in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for many years. He later became employed with the House of Rayford Farm in Neesman, South Carolina and worked for well over a decade. He was most recently employed with Agro America until his transition. Junior was a devout man. He, his smile and gentle spirit was felt when he entered the room. He, entered, he enjoyed fishing, dancing, playing pool, spending time and laughing with family and friends. Junior believed in the strength of family. He was loving, bonded with Juliet Presley, and they were blessed with 10 children, seven of which they shared together. Those left to cherish his memories are the loving parents, Robert Lee Langley and Rosalind Brockington Langley, life companion, Juliet Presley, children, Robert R. Kelly Presley, Rashawn Tyreek Langley, Niasia Amari Langley, Juanisha Chantel Langley, Deshawn Lamar Langley, Julicia Shade Langley, Julian Jerry Langley, Jamar Jaquan Langley, and Phoenix Jacoby Langley, all of Hemingway, South Carolina. Siblings, Nicole Langley of Hemingway, South Carolina, James Curtis Langley, Katricia of Bradenton, Florida, and Sharice Bell, Tony of Hemingway, South Carolina, aunts and uncles, Eugene Brockington, Roger Brockington, Juanita, Marvin Brockington, Bernice, Willie James Walker, Annie, Annie, excuse me, Annie Lee, Belinda Sumter, Alberta Rockington, OB, Alice Rockington, Priscilla Rockington, Patricia Lennon, Floyd, Catherine Neesmith, James, Gladys Wilson, Justine Davis, Fred, Donnie Rockington, Annie, Christine Pittman, Rudolph, and Shirley Rockington, one great uncle John Wesley Coates, Dorothy, one grandchild, Tegan Corrine Langley, and a host of cousins, nieces, nephews, and friends. The family of Robert Jr. Langley would like to thank everyone for everything that you have done, all the love shown. We especially would like to thank um, the church family here, Pastor Reverend Jared Washington, the Hopewell and the Hopewell AME Church family, Pastor R. M. R. Singletary, and the Pleasant View Church family, Reverend Marvin Brockington, and Victory Memorial, Memorial Baptist Church of Philadelphia. Um, the family would also like to thank all of the officials that have traveled long, near from near and far to be here at this service on today. Amen. So we, and we return, we'd like to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to Neesmith and Pinckney Funeral Home for all the services that have been provided. Amen. Certainly we could not have done anything without all of these people, everyone here, and everything that you have done. So today we just want to express a special, special thank you to everyone. Thank you. Exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask. 
will give their life to Christ before it's too late. Amen? Amen. Let us bow our head in a word of prayer. Most holy and everlasting Father, God, we come, God, for thy people today, God. God, we asking you in the mighty name of Jesus. God, for all those that are not saved today, Lord, we asking that you will send a rest horn for each and every one of them. God, that they may cry out unto thee, what must I do to be saved? Christ's name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. And amen. I want to talk a little bit from a familiar patches of scripture. And it's coming out of Luke 22. For those of you who have this sword, I pray you have this sword with you. Where you, where you can know rather I'm lying or telling you the truth or not. Amen? Yeah. Luke, the 22 chapter, in the 22nd verse through the 24. And it reads as follows. And truly the Son of Man goes as it was determined, but woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. Right. And they begin to inquire among themselves. Which one of them uh, it was among should do this thing? And there was a strife. There was also a strife among them. Which one of them should be accounted the greatest? That's in the reading of God's word. I want to talk a little bit this afternoon. From the thought, don't you want to go to heaven? Don't, don't you want to go to heaven? Listen, there's a lot of places I want to go. There's a lot of things I want to see. But if I could make it to heaven, that's enough for me. Yes, That's enough for me. Yes, sir. If I can make it to heaven. I know you're right. The most important event in human history was about to take place. And the disciples were still arguing about their prestige in the kingdom. Looking back, we say this was no time to worry about the status. But the disciples wrapped up in their own concern did not perceive what Jesus had been trying to tell them about his uh, approaching death and resurrection. All right. Church, I stop by to tell you this is where the most of us at. In our prestige, right, in our recognition yeah. that we forgot about our Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus the Christ. Church, I stop by to let you know yeah. it's time to get your house in order. Jesus the Christ is. I beg you today before you leave here get to know who he is. All right, all right. What are your main concerns today? When 20 years from now has from 20 years from now had you looked back will those worries look petty or inappropriate? Many people 
at your circumstances. To see rather you are going on with Jesus or will you side with the world? The flesh or the devil will call Jesus' name. We use his name. We wear his name. But we are going on with Jesus. John 635 says, and he said, therefore, I said unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. He said, from that time, many of his disciples went back to walk no more with Jesus. Uh, uh, we live in a time when trials and tribulation before us. And soon we forget how good God is. But I stop by to let you know in spite of he's good. The temptation of Jesus continued throughout his earthly life. They will continue throughout the life of God in us. We are going on with Jesus. Just the same. We will press through the difficulty of this life that we are living right now to go on with Jesus. The good thing about God, God left a road map to let you know what to look forward to. The Bible lets you know that you will have trials and tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. Just as sure as he is overcome, so shall we shall overcome. Romans 10, 9 and 10 said that if thou will confess with thy mouth all right, all right. the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, yes. thou shalt, not mine, all right. he said thou shalt yeah. be saved. Yeah. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness yes. and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. Yes, sir. Church, I need you to hear me this afternoon. Some people say we have the idea that we ought to be shield ourselves from some of the things God allows in our lives. A gym cannot be polished without fixture. I know that's right, Pastor. No man without trial. Yes. <laughs> 
the campus. Yes, sir. Hebrew 13, 13 says, the way is, is lonely and goes on until there is no longer even a trace of footprint to follow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the voice saying, follow me. You better preach, sir. Follow me. Matthew 11, 28 says, Come unto me, yes. all you who are laboring yes. and are heavy burdened, yes. and I will give you rest. Yes. I stop by yes. to ask you a question. Yes. Don't you want to go to heaven? Yes. Uh, there's a lot of young people in here. Uh -huh. But Jane Cleveland sang an old song some years ago. Yes. When my grandmother used to play this song. Right. I used to say, what is grandma talking about? Yeah. But I lived long enough right. to get an understanding yeah. of what my grandma was talking about. Yeah. And the old gospel sin song ends like this. I've never been to Paris in the spring or the fall.
said, is there anybody that want to give their life to the Lord? We never preach a funeral without giving somebody the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. Anybody. Lord, whatever.
to ask that you keep them in your prayers. And to the families that will not be journeying with us and find rest in place, we will have our benediction at the cemetery. At this time, we're going to ask the ministers if you can come, please, and lead us out. No. 